Welcome back, Stasis23 here, back again with some night therapy, and today I have for you the Finch Knives Runtly. This is the Black Shiner Edition. Comes in at $139, and uh, let's get some specs out of the way so you can have an idea of how big or small this knife really is. You have a total length of 5.5 inches, so it's going to be in that smaller category. Uh, you have a blade length of 2.25 inches, so it's going to be legal in a lot of areas. You have a grip area from here to the back of 3.25 inches, or no, I'm sorry, a handle, uh, a handle length of 3.25 inches. Uh, scale thickness of 0.51 inches, so a little, little above average. You have a width, closed width in pocket from this point here of 1.24 inches, and you have a blade stock thickness of 0.116 inches. The behind the edge thickness on my particular knife ranges from about 17 thousandths at the thinnest to 19 thousandths at the thickest, and it's sharpened at around 22, 22 degrees per side. All right, before we go any further, let's put this Runtly through the test and see how well it does. Check the factory sharpness on the Runtly. Came ridiculously sharp as well. Form outstanding. All right, we're gonna attempt to cut this uh, half inch twisted CSI rope. Try to do 20 cuts. All right, I did 15 just because with that short little worn clip blade, I didn't have a whole lot of force to be able to push down on there. Still did good. Uh, let's check out the edge. Nice. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna try to cut up several different types of materials. Some thick saddle leather, some half inch dense tubing, one inch dense tubing, both of them with nylon in them. Some bungee, half, quarter inch bungee half inch thick rubber, some seat belt material. Let's get started. Excellent point for this type of work. Very easily. All right, that performed nicely. Went through everything as good as I could hope for. Um, it's a small blade, so I wouldn't be trying to chop down trees with it or anything. <clears throat> so I definitely give that a pass. Let's see how it's holding up. Still feels sharp. Cut up some of this uh, blue jean denim. All right, did all right. Uh, it's just such a short blade and I have a whole lot of handle put pressure down. That blue jean wants to spread out whenever I cut it. So they did okay. Still 
still has a decent edge on it. Uh, not as sharp as it was when this one started. It has some hang-ups, but still got a good working edge. All right, we're gonna test the air goes and kind of see how the edge is biting on this pine two by four. I'm not gonna do too much with this little blade. Let's see, we'll start light, then start digging into it. All right, I think it performed excellent for how small it was. Um, I love, love that warranty for my everyday type of task. Um, it just, you don't have to worry about it sliding out of a cut. Now, if I were to be processing game, of course, I would rather, you know, something with some belly to it. But I love that detail work you can get with this. And that neutral handle is fairly comfortable and it's uh, somewhat contoured. So I'm enjoying this one. All right, I hope y'all enjoyed that cutting footage. I enjoyed making it for y'all, like always. Uh, let's take a closer look at this. This this knife right here, in my opinion, is a perfect fifth fifth pocket carry, um, and it's it's gonna make an excellent like detailed type oriented knife because you can get your finger all the way to that end to guide that tip into things. And that tip is going to be excellent at, you know, scoring things or cutting strips of stuff. And worn cliffs, I, I always enjoy using them because you can get a lot of power behind that cut. You know, doing cardboard and stuff like that, you're not going to have to worry about the the, uh, the blade sliding out of the cut because of belly. Sometimes when you get a lot of belly, you accidentally slide out of the cut. This is going to keep it in the cut. Um... On this particular variation, you have a two-tone blade, you have a horizontal like brush satin finish on the flats, and your primary has a nicely done uh, stone wash finish on there. You do have a little sharpening notch right there that does clear that plunge grind. As you can see, no uh, thickening so far. That point is pretty, uh, pretty nice and precise for piercing and through drag through cuts i like that font they use on the uh finch right here nice and tasteful you just you usually just see plain boring font on most knives flip it over on this side you got the name of the knife and the blade steel which is 154 cm and i i like it 154 is just that good middle of the road steel it's it's starting to become more in that toward that budget range but i still enjoy it um especially uh CPM 154 that's you know uh, it's it's even better um, the nail nicks are a nice little touch giving you that traditional feel for like that traditional slip joint or lock back but I like it because you can use it to open the knife and sometimes when I get it yeah I can spidey flick it as well so nicely done there you do have a little small row of jimping that does do a good job of gripping the thumb uh, but I use for most part I overshot it whenever I was using it I would put my thumb up there or grab it the hammer grip so not really needed there uh, you do have flip you do have jumping on that flipper tab that catches the finger just nicely uh, you can get a light switch like that or you can load it up and do that push button the action is nice riding on ceramic bearings and ceramic detent ball close it up also Vincent mentioned the the Flipper tab was executed nicely. It's in a good position and it's canted back so you're not poking yourself because it's, you know, forward or anything. You have a semi flow through construction on here with a black G10 backspacer, contoured G10 scales that are done nicely and they have a nice finish to them. They're smooth to the touch. This shield right here is is inset flush with the uh, thing. You can kind of feel this side because of the contour, but it's not like sharp or anything. That shield does glow in the dark. I'll charge it up real quick. So as you can see, it, it's green in there. It does glow in the dark. You have T6 body screw, which you only have that one body screw right here. And you have a T8 pivot, uh, milled titanium pocket clip, tip up right hand carry only. Blade centering is dead on. Um, 
The lock access is nice. They have this little cutout, easy to get to, and they put a chamfer and <clears throat> on the lock side so it's it's not sharp, nice and comfortable. These uh, scales have like a semi-polished finish to them. They are flush. They don't. They're not inset, uh, and they are stainless steel. There is no internal milling. But the weight on this knife, as small as it is, is uh, is just fine. Speaking of weight, let's check that out real quick. You have 3.14 ounces. Not bad whatsoever, especially in that fifth pocket. <laughs> um, I, I would forget it was there. Let's get some size comparisons out of the way. Um, I'm only going to show two because I don't. this is a pretty small knife. You have the Ontario Rat Model 2, which is a smaller one. As you can see, it's it's much smaller than the Rat 2. And one that's probably a little bit closer would be the Civivi Odium, which is a small knife, and it's still a good bit longer than the Finch. <coughs> uh, nitpicks and complaints. Uh, I don't really have a whole lot. I think it was pretty well done uh, for what it is. But, uh, you know, I will say on this... The price is is pretty high. I understand that. Um, you know, they, they did a good job on the finish of it. I understand they're a small company, so, you know, it's going to cost them more per knife. So that's understandable. Um, so you just really got to love the design. And um, it, it performed nicely. It was a pretty good slicer. Only other thing that that I, that I had a nitpick with was the pocket clip, just like on the 1929. It's pretty stiff. Can be hard to get in and out of the pocket um, if you have a thicker pair of pants on or something. And while we're talking about that, let me show y'all what it looks like in the pocket. So not much sticking out. It does kind of sit further to this way because of that, that blade, how the blade, you know, comes out like that. But you do not feel that, I, I didn't feel that uh, pocket clip because it was low profile and how it sat whenever I put my hand in there, whenever I put my hand down in there, I, I, it just kind of, whoop, kind of disappeared. So overall, I, I think it's a well done knife. Uh, I've enjoyed both Finch knives. They, they perform nicely. Uh, 1929 really blew me away. This is a well done knife. If you can justify the $139, then, I, you know, I say go for it. If you like the way it looks, it, it, like I said, it's going to perform nicely. Um, this one is just a little high for me. So there you go. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute wonderful day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.